let us go ahead and talk about something called as password hash synchronization, okay? Now this is also acronymed as PHS. Now what is PHS? Now PHS is one of the sign-in methods that will help us accomplish what's called as hybrid identities. Now what is hybrid identity? Now hybrid identity is a kind of identity that exists both on-premises on your Azure Active Directory. So let's say on the left-hand side of this line, is your on-premises and I'm representing this by a triangle and we all know that triangle means a domain and inside this domain we got something called as let's say a DC a domain controller you may have multiple domain controllers in your environment but just for demonstration purposes let's say I've got a single DC and if you are subscribed to a tenant in Azure Active Directory you will have an Azure Active Directory subscription as well now traditionally we had like a lot of users in your environment let's call them as Joe Rob and another guy called as Steve and then they used to access your on-premise applications let's say these applications are your timesheet applications and possibly other applications that have been built for your internal purposes but regardless let's call them internal applications and now all of these applications are going to the cloud now we call them as SaaS based applications and you can call them as let's say workday and even service now and how can we forget our m365 application and that's also a SaaS based application isn't it now the objective here is to take these on-premises users all the way to the cloud now that's not a single step there is another intermediary step in the middle so I'm gonna remove this arrow right there and then talk about something called as Azure Active Directory Connect so what we need to do is go ahead and download that Azure Active Directory Connect tool provision a server specifically for that because we usually do not provision the Azure Active Directory Connect tool on domain controllers. Well, yeah, you can do it on your test environment if you want to see or if you want to get a taste of the password hash sync or how the entire thing works, you can definitely install it on a DC, but on production environments, it's not recommended to install it on a domain controller. And for that purpose, I will have a separate server and call it as Azure Active Directory connect server okay on a side note I would recommend that you treat this server as a domain controller and protect it and secure it as much as you do it for a DC okay all right so there are two things that are happening here number one is the syncing of hashes itself right and the second thing is then using those hashes for authentication purposes now these are the two things that are happening here I we're going to talk about these two things one by one okay so I'm gonna get rid of this All right there you go so there are a series of steps that we're gonna talk about now the first step here is about the sync engine which is the Azure Active Directory sync engine contacts the domain controller and then it says hey do you have any replication requests is there something that you want to send to me well the domain controller thinks about it and then responds it responds with possible changes that have happened as far as passwords are concerned as far as even any attributes are concerned and that comes as a payload to our Azure Active Directory Connect server. Now this payload is in a particular format, a hashed format, what's called as an MD4. By the way, MD4 is a hashing algorithm and what I mean to say when I say hashing is that let's say your password is alpha three two one exclamation it's gonna convert that to a string and the string value will be alphanumeric maybe it will look something like this 46 and it will have some gibberish values all the way to the end and that is a MD4 value okay now this MD4 value that is generated is sent to the Azure Active Directory Connect server what's gonna happen next the Azure Active Directory Connect server this guy sitting right here will be rehashing these values so whatever it received it's gonna rehash them use a technique called as salting and this particular technique called as salting ensures that even if two users have the same password it will result in a different output so the values will be different finally all of these algorithms and rehashing and salting that's happening will then result in what's called as a 32-bit value right so the Azure Active Directory Connect server has got a 32-bit value which it needs to now send to the domain controller right so we were at step number three 
and this I'm saying is step number three, then step number four is that the Azure AD Connect server sends all of this data to the cloud over SSL, okay? Now these values that it's receiving will be stored inside Azure Active Directory. Now the stories that Azure Active Directory got will then be encrypted with the help of BitLocker. So that's the step number five. Just to summarize this, the step number one is where the sync engine nudges the domain controller and asks, hey, if it's got any kind of replication request. Step number two is about sending all of that information or the changes in MD4 format. When the Azure Active Directory Connect server receives it, it's gonna rehash it, salt it, and then that's step number three. Step number four is to send that information all the way to Azure Active Directory. And the step number five is to encrypt that storage with BitLocker on Azure Active Directory. Now we do not do anything here, it's just the background story which I'm talking about. All you as an admin gotta do is install and configure the Azure Active Directory Connect server and that's all. So as you see what's going on here is passing of the hashes from one format to another, from one server, to another. The password hash sync is what's happening from your on-prem server all the way to the cloud-based identity mechanism, what's called as Azure Active Directory, okay? A few things that I want to tell you about why PHS is so critical here and how it helps to maintain the information security or password security is that there is a feature called as leaked credential detection. Okay, so what is it doing? The password has sync when you enable that, it also enables leaked credential detection. We all know that we tend to use credentials repeatedly. So that means that if I have used a credential somewhere in some application, it is highly likely that I'm gonna use it on my premises as well. So let's say when such accounts are found in dark web or paste bin, then Microsoft's gonna notify it. So how does Microsoft get to know that those credentials are out there on dark web? That's because Microsoft works alongside dark web researchers and also law enforcement agencies to find publicly available credentials. And if any one of those credentials are found for your users, then that user account will then be moved to high risk, okay? And then high risk accounts are then subjected to multi-factor authentication. And even you can configure your identity protection in a way that such kind of high risk accounts are blocked. So the steps to enable the password hash sync are pretty simple. All you gotta do is install Azure Active Directory Connect in your environment, and let it go through, go through the default values, and then you have the password hash sync enabled. However, certain environments do not like this kind of a sync. They do not like the synchronization of your on-premises accounts to cloud-based identity system, right? In that case, you would refrain from using password hash synchronization, but rather you will use something called as PTA, also stands for pass-through authentication. So let's go ahead and talk about pass-through authentication and the functionality of that in the next section. Thanks for watching so far.